So far we've seen two types of compounds, ionic compounds and molecular compounds. Now, like everything else, these compounds have names. In chemistry, the naming is not completely arbitrary. We follow a certain protocol, a certain method of naming these compounds. In this segment, we'll focus on how to name ionic compounds. Let us first focus on binary ionic compounds. These are compounds that have one cation and one anion. Sodium chloride is one such example. It's composed of sodium plus cations and Cl minus anions. The name is sodium chloride. Cesium bromide is another example, composed of cesium plus cations and bromine minus anions. Cesium bromide. Now, in order to name these binary ionic compounds properly, we have to specify whether or not the first element, the cation, is of type 1 or of type 2. Now, type 1 cations are those that can only have one charge. Type 2 are those cations that can have a variable charge. So, let us start with looking at binary ionic compounds that have a type 1 cation. In naming these compounds, we use the following set of rules. 1. We name the cation first and the anion second. In naming the cation, we use the name of the element. In naming the anion, we use also the name of the element, but with the suffix "-ied". So that means the following. That means that a compound composed of cesium and fluorine becomes cesium fluoride. Cesium first, the fluorine, the anion, second, with the suffix "-ied". The next compound is aluminum chloride, because we name aluminum first, the cation, the anion is the chlorine anion, we use the full root, which is chlorine, with the suffix "-ied", which means aluminum chloride. This compound is composed of calcium and sulfur. We name calcium first and sulfur second. Sulfur with the suffix "-ied", so it becomes calcium sulfide. Magnesium oxide is called magnesium oxide because the oxygen anion acquires the suffix "-ied". Now, let us next look at ionic compounds that contain a type 2 cation. The naming of these compounds is almost the same as those of the ionic compounds that contain a type 1 cation. There's one important exception, and that is that we have to specify with a Roman numeral the charge of the cation. Here's an example. Manganese 2 plus ions. Let's say I make an oxide a manganese oxide. In this case, the manganese oxide would be manganese 2 oxide because we have to specify with a Roman numeral the charge of the cation. Manganese 3 plus, if we form an oxide with this, this would be called manganese 3 oxide. Manganese 4 plus cations, if we form an oxide with those, that compound would be called manganese 4 oxide. So we always have to specify with the Roman numeral the charge of the cation. Here's a list of common type 2 cations and their systematic name. Let's look at a couple of examples of type 2 ionic compounds. For instance, copper 1 chloride is called copper 1 chloride. Why is it the 1 and not copper 2? That is because the chlorine has charge minus 1 which means to make a neutral compound, it must be copper 1 plus. So copper 1 chloride. The next one is iron oxide. It's iron 3 oxide. Why is it a 3 and not a 2? That's because I have 3 oxygens. Each oxygen anion has charge minus 2. That means 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. To compensate for the minus 6, I need 6 plus charges. I can do that by having 2 cations that are 3 plus, having a total of 6 plus charge. That means I have two 3 plus iron cations. Iron 3 oxide. Next, mercury 2 oxide. Because oxide once again has charge minus 2. To make a neutral compound, the mercury must have charge 2 plus. And then finally, lead chloride. 
This is a lead 2 chloride because I have two chlorines, both have charge minus 1, a total of 2 minus. To compensate for that, I need a 2 plus charge. The lead is a cation of charge 2 plus. Lead 2 chloride. 